As the old refrain goes, people who need people are the luckiest people in the world. And then there's Andy Rooney. I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about people. People are everywhere nowadays. It seems like you can't go anywhere without bumping into some people. People follow you when you're shopping. They ask you for directions. And sometimes they ask you what time it is. People never know what time it is. They have to ask you. There are over 4 billion people in the world. That's a lot of people. And I suppose most people like each other all right. But I don't. I don't like people, and I never have. I guess that makes me bad. Advertisers are always using people to help sell their products. Here's something called cornflakes. It's got a picture of some people on the box. I, I guess we're supposed to think, well, these people like cornflakes. I guess I will, too. But I don't think that. I don't like people, and I don't like pictures of people, either. There's even a magazine now about people. It's called People Magazine. <laughs> this issue has a picture of some fellow's head on it. Bet that's a good article. <laughs> Here's a box of letters from different people. Seems there's nothing people enjoy more than writing me letters. Here's one from Washington. This one's from Ohio. Here's one from North Dakota. This one's from Paris, Texas. Now, I don't know where Paris, Texas is, but I do know this. I'm getting pretty tired of cities in Texas naming themselves after cities in France. <laughs> here's one. Here's one from Chicago. This one's from Iowa. Here's one from Iowa, too. This one's from Montana. Here's one from some place called Kansas City. Here's one from Wisconsin. This one's from Arizona. Here's one from Las Vegas. Here's one from Virginia. Oh, and here's another one from West Virginia. This one's from Indiana. I don't know where this one's from, but it's yellow and it has a big stamp on it. This one's from Colorado. Here's one from Michigan. I receive about 100 of these letters every single day. I never open them. I don't like opening them. I set fire to them. Then I pour water on the box of burning letters to put out the fire. Then I take the whole mess and I dump it out my window on the people below. These people don't like that much, but I like doing it to them. I suppose that makes me bad. We'll be back next week with another edition of 60 Minutes. But swearing and using dirty words is not one of my vices. I don't use foul language, and I don't like to hear anyone else use it either. It doesn't make me a wonderful person, but I like this about myself, or I wouldn't be telling you about it. You don't hear dirty words on broadcast television very often, except on cable and satellite, because 30 years ago, the Federal Communications Commission banned their use in broadcasting. It was the right thing to do, but I know what words I think are okay to use and which ones are not, and I don't need the FCC to tell me what they are. Later this year, the Supreme Court will be deciding whether some broadcasters should be fined by the FCC for the brief use of those dirty words. They call them fleeting expletives. No one has ever explained what harm dirty words do, but it's like bad manners. 
I mean, life is a bootstrap operation, and dirty words may not be much, but they diminish the quality of all our lives by just a little bit. I think if the Federal Communications Commission left broadcasters alone, there would be very little profanity on the air because most people just don't want it. And if listeners don't want it, broadcasters wouldn't give it to them. I was in the Army for four years. I know all the four-letter words. I just don't want to be reminded of them on broadcast. But I don't want a lot of government agencies trying to regulate what I can say or hear on the air, either. Language is one of the best tools ever invented for anything, and English is by far the best language. We should be careful using it, though, so I'll damn well decide for myself what I can say and what I can't say. I'm Scott.
the United States all the time. Same shit. Like, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, I'm coming in. But they gotta fly so far to come over. Oh, Alaska. Yeah, Alaska. You know Alaska used to be Russia? How, how many hundred years ago? Uh, not that long. Not that long ago? Okay. Yeah, not that I long. Not those Are coins. There <laughs> Are there Russians in Alaska? I think we might have even bought it from Russia. Yeah, but there's, from there's, Italy. um, there's Russian settlements in Alaska. Wow. Yeah, so some people- Paying for it too, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, there's like a Russian like Orthodox church there and there's like Russian communities. The part that sucks about all these, like with the sanctions and stuff, it's the regular people get hurt the most. Yeah. Like, Apple pull the plug, Nike pull the plug, yeah. and there's just all these like just people, regular goods. People that, are gonna starve, man. Yeah, it's just these leaders, they have beef, but then the people that really get hurt are just like the regular. Everybody people. just runs out of Apple and Nike products. Did you see that um, that for Airbnbs that are in Russia, <laughs> like people from over here are just, or from everywhere in the world are just making reservations and paying for time? Like even though they, wow. they're not going over there, just to help people out. Oh, in yeah. Ukraine? Cool. Yeah, 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 oh, Ukraine, well. yeah, and I Russia, and Russia. Really, Russia too? Yeah. I think so. Or just to help the people. Or out. maybe just Ukraine. No, I think people are just trying to. Because I, I saw yeah. a video of like a um, a Russian guy POW on the Ukraine side, and the Ukrainians are actually feeding him and letting him call his mom because he's like just crying. He's like, "Fuck, I'm a POW now." But I just think people across the world don't want war. Yeah. So when it comes to just yeah. people taking yeah. care of regular people, ass people. Yeah, Ukrainians boy. don't have beef with Russian people. It's just the the political leaders have beef. So everyone's just like, "Dude, this shit fucking sucks, man. Like, how can we take care of each other?" Yeah. Like, so why would civilians want that? It's like gang fighting in your own neighborhood. Like, why would you want that shit? Yeah. Were the Ukrainians like, "Do you want your mommy?" <laughs> what if they're just laughing in the background while he's talking to his mom? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I think it's a it's a human right. Like everyone should be able to go on iTunes and buy a Ja Rule single, you know? Like every single person. Every single person. And depriving common people of that. Of Ja Rule singles? Dude, of like, Apple Pay, do you know how convenient that is? Everyone should be listening to Ja Rule and Ashanti songs. That's the best song. Russians right now are paying a 40% premium on Bitcoin in order to hedge against the ruble. What? The ruble's Fuck. under a dollar now. Damn. Yeah, because the ruble both ruble went down work. and Bitcoin went oh, up oh, in oh, that oh, country. Oh, where was it and where's it now? Uh, it's a 40%, so I think the ruble went down 20% and the, the Bitcoin premium was like 20%, so it's a 40% change or something. I don't know the exact one. I, I know it's a 40% premium. How much rubles did you hold? I'm yeah. holding it all the way till the moon, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh you know their God. stock market's been it, down for like too. five, six days now. Dude, like they, they just they just shut it down completely. Really? Yeah. Cause one of the things that I was reading about like how they can win the war against Russia is bankrupting them. Mm. And and they said just like in ten days they can bankrupt the country. And I was like, damn, that sounds really short for a country that's really It's volatile. crazy to think that our politicians right now are basically saying like, Hey Russia, we will attack your economy and put your economy to zero. Like how is that not like Scaring the shit out of people in Russia. Or scaring the shit out of the rest of the world. The rest of the world. Well, that our country can do that? Yeah. Yeah. I texted my mom, and my mom's in Taiwan, and I'm like, she was planning on coming back in May. I'm like, I think you might want to come back sooner. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. And then she says her news over there isn't, um, as like dramatized so they feel safer obviously that's what my dad said too. they don't want people to freak out or whatever but at the same time but did your dad tell you about a national blackout no my, my mom told me there was an entire uh the entire country had a blackout that has never happened before what the do you mean whole like, country yeah. they, were they problem? like we're saving electricity because taiwanese people love to save money so is it like, is that what happened or what? I don't know. I, I thought they're preparing was... for the economic crisis that may face them. No, they're just like lately. You know, we've been wasting so much electricity. Turn off the AC, high. okay? Yeah. The Ukrainians' news wasn't that sensationalized either, right yeah. before no. it happened. So. All I, I heard a lot of Ukrainians just were like, "What the fuck?" Overnight, and they just had to yeah. flee immediately. Yeah. So uh, I was watching this one vlogger dude. He's uh, this Asian guy from San Francisco. I think his name's like Johnny FD, right? And then he, he's a travel vlogger, and, and I watch uh, this other dude, Bald and Bankrupt, they, they all go around and um, travel all over like Eastern Europe and, and whatever. They were actually in Ukraine because um, I think they bought an apartment there or whatever. And then so what he was saying is that like, when you talk to people on the ground, like no one saw this coming. And so, yeah, there was news about war against like Russia and stuff, but then they had war in what, 2014. And then so they're like, it's the threat is always there anyway. So it's not like 
yeah, whatever. It's not that scary, I guess, to them because they go, oh, it's just Russia blocking. Like missile attacks in Israel. Exactly. It's, like, like, it's always there, right? Yeah. Uh, so then, so, fun, so, yeah. so like, right. two, two, three days before the invasion, he actually was in, you know, the states gathering his things, going back to like fill up his apartment or whatever, and then war broke out. So it was, it was really watch interesting watching the dude just talking about like all the steps that that was going down, and he said like so. Um, Everybody outside of Ukraine was like, yeah, war's going to break out, get the fuck out of that country. But everyone in Ukraine was like, nah, they're bluffing. Mm. So it's it's just depending on, you know, the media, where you're at. Who you're listening to. Who you're listening to. And then common citizens don't know what the leaders are actually plotting. So. That's why I'm trying to get my fucking mom out. But then if the fucking feng shui doesn't tell her there's going to be a war, she's not going to fucking listen. Dude, yeah. just feng shui, you can make that shit up, it's easy. Yeah, you can tell her, dude, I talked to my own feng shui master. No, because they always change the rules. They for do. The, they change the, the rules, dude. Thing, man. That's how it works. When you're older, the rules work for you. Did you see the Penn and Teller bullshit about feng shui? She was so good. No, dude, it's not bullshit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bullshit, my bad, dude. That's disrespectful. You shouldn't watch that. <laughs> Is feng shui telling you that it's not bullshit right now? My feng shui guy tells me that you're fucking lying, dude. Okay, my bad, dude. And you're full of shit. My bad. Dude, um, you know what's crazy is that the standard is for most governments to not panic their citizens, but America's just fucking different. Yeah. The media is so responsible that they just want everyone to go into frenzy so they sell more fucking... It's his own entity. Yeah, but that most countries... That sounds like a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but like, most countries don't want that. Is the fight. That's why, like, even with Ukraine, they probably just don't want people to start freaking out. I think we will freak out if our news goes... It's not a big deal. Calm down. Yeah. You'd be like, what? <laughs> this just in. Everything's cool. So cool. Yeah, right just, hey, just chill, everybody. Just chill. We're cool. <laughs> Dude, if they ever said that, we would all automatically think the opposite. That's the best thing about well, yeah. it. We'd be well, like, okay, now I'm gonna freak well, out. Because that's what they do with every, even with like that's how that's how it's a red flag when you see all these fucking Asian people getting fucked up, and then the news goes, well, you know, crime's actually down. Crime is down. Then you're just like, wait, how the fuck is that happening yeah, then? Yeah. Crime's down for me. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know. Right. It's like, <laughs> that response tells you right there, wait, Jesus why are you doing Christ. that? The yeah. news Jesus usually... <laughs>
Go. listener 101. So I've been feeling kind of stressed and depressed lately because of my life trajectory. For context, I'm a 26-year-old guy living in my parents' basement, just graduated from... People actually live in their parents' basements. That's not like a meme, huh? I thought it was a meme. I thought it was this a meme, time. too. I thought it was 100% a meme. thought it was something politicians right, used to slam not, the kids. So stop hurting people's feelings. <laughs> okay. I'm a 26-year-old guy living in my parents' basement, just graduated from my second degree and working at an entry-level bank job that pays basically minimum wage. My first degree was in sociology, which ended up being kind of useless, so I thought I'd give up I thought I'd give teaching a shot and got my B.E.D. last spring. What's that? Bachelor's um, uh, uh, erectile dysfunction. (laughs) B.E.D. I wonder what that is. No idea. Huh. All right. Well, anyway, I think. Maybe bachelor's education. I don't know. I don't fucking know. That's always a a a B.A. is a bachelor's. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let us know in the comments if you know what that is. Yeah, please. I think I got scared of going into the real world after my first degree. So I panicked and stayed in school thinking that it'd be a better payoff in the long run. But now I'm realizing that I lost a lot of time because I wasn't even that passionate about teaching. But in Alberta, Canada, where I'm from, teachers make pretty good money. So it wasn't too hard to convince myself and my Asian parents that I'd be financially okay later in life. Anyway, now I'm feeling lost because I know I'm better than a minimum wage job. I have. We cannot change the past, but we can start today to make a better tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's me. Today we're checking out some things that I learned on TikTok. With a lock like that, I can still break into your house and I can do no, it quietly. Those are very safe and secure. What are you doing? And he just hit the, the lock with the charger. He let himself in. I have been on pick lock TikTok lately where it's like, I'm convinced no lock is safe. Anybody can break into your house. All you need is like a lock picky kit and just do, 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 do. Squiggle it around a little bit. Do a little dancey dance. The lock is picked. But what he did with it, that was smooth. You just put a wire, grab the thing and just like. Okay, that was really good. You earned your way into this house. How do snowboarders train with no snow? What? I don't even know such a device existed. It's like a treadmill for a snowboard. Yeah, that looks fun. Why don't they have this at the gym for the rest of us? Wanna ride a snowboard? Like that actually looks really fun. Like they gotta put this in arcades, put it at the gym. I'd like to use it. You know there are islands that are ruled by animals? Like Red Crab Island. And it's on Christmas Island. <laughs> and they got Christmas 24-7. You know, Christmas Island, it's always Christmas. You know, if you listen Listen closely, all you'll hear is money, money, money. Hey, they running over the crab! Hey, move! Get out the way! They just casually driving through crabs. I mean, to be fair, they shouldn't have been on the road. Like, people got places to be. There are people that live on the island with the crabs. Finding out I'm having triplets, not knowing how big I'll get. At 10 weeks, 15 weeks. Hey, it's getting big. Is it supposed to be that big that fast? Two weeks left! Oh, hey, that's how they're like chilling in there? It looks like they're all snuggled around the fire, using everybody's back for warmth. Except this guy, he's trying to grab some toes. And this is just crazy to me, because it's like, oh, I'm gonna have a baby. And then boom, three babies. Out to what? That's too many. There is an Easter egg inside the joystick of a Switch controller. Like, look, (gasps) is this real? Look inside. Thanks to all game fans. That's so cool. It's just hiding in there. I don't got a Switch controller, so I can't confirm this. But if you have one, check the joystick. Things that are bigger than you think. Megalodon mouth. Oh, <gasps> wait. That's comparing it to a regular shark? My brain's trying to like figure out how big that is. That's like a whale. Now I gotta Google Megalodon shark versus whale to see the size comparison. No, 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 no. Whale is much larger. Almost double the size of this thing. The ocean is scary. <laughs> Pterodactyl. Ah! 
Wait, that was not how I was expecting it to look like. Yeah, I thought they looked like this. Like small beak, big wing. I'm sorry, but those wings cannot support the weight of that neck. Let alone the beak. What he got so much beak for? Can peck at people a mile away. Like that's not even fair. And he can fly. Crazy how birds these days can't do no damage but poop on your car. Really disappointing your ancestors. The huge ice skating arenas, how do they make them? They don't just magically spawn out of the ground every year. They fill it up with water and then freeze the water. And then of course, if you're smart, you know that frozen water is ice. <laughs> I was today years old when I realized you used the oatmeal packet as your measuring cup. I'm learning more on TikTok than I am in college. TikTok is free. Y'all didn't know this? I mean, there's always gonna be somebody who doesn't know something, but like what? Were you whipping out the measuring cup for the oatmeal packet? It literally says fill line. Y'all don't read the directions. Y'all look at the microwave directions, but you don't see the little fill line. Like you fill the packet with water until the line. Oh, uh, well, if you didn't know, now you know. Did you know how a starfish eats? The mouth is on the inside, in the middle. This mouth. So when you see a mermaid and wonder how they're attached, now you know. Anyways, let's see this bad boy eat. It's feeding time. And it takes the little tentacles, grabs it, and it brings it to the mouth hole so it can chow down. Oh, that was very fascinating. So this is this little beetle device. Just step on it and then, <gasps> ooh. It just takes off your shoe. Oh, what makes it so easy? Oh, they have one. What? That's so cool. I didn't know that either. I thought it was decor. What's it do it? Just hide it in the corner. What, all of these years, you could have been helping me take off my sweaty shoes. Like, you don't have to like dig in your ankle. You don't have to undo the shoelaces. It just like holds it down with its little horns. That's just oh, magical. You know that TikTok sound that's like, what's the problem? Dog! A while ago, I found out that it was from the show Victorious, which I watched religiously in high school. What's the problem? Dog. Uh, leave it to Jade to be iconic. She was carrying that show. Well, I mean, that's where it comes from. Okay, good to know. How do they get the bones out of salmon? Cause you know, I like my salmon boneless. There are chains that scrape the surface of the salmon and raise the bones. Ooh. And then the rollers lift up the bone and then the water pushes it into the trash. Okay, bones in fish terrify me. Because when I was a kid, my mom told me not to eat the bones in fish. If you get a bone in your fish, spit it out because it'll puncture your, <laughs> your intestine or something and you'll die. So don't eat the bones of the fish. So I've always been scared scared of fish bones. Tell me how unreasonable my fear is. Also, why would my parents tell me that? Like, I would have spit them out anyway. Oh, the yeah, hotels be lying to everybody. Nice name brand cereals. Yes, we have Frosted Flakes, Raisin Bran. Where are you going? What's in that door? They cap into you. None of his name brand. It's all a lie. You mean they sure do taste like it. I don't care what none of y'all say. The hotels with a free breakfast, slap. If it gets me out of bed, six in the morning, to go down, make me a little plate, you know it's good. It just hit different. I don't care if it's not name brand. To be fair, they did do me a little dirty. Putting the stickers on it like Frosted Flakes, only because it looked better. Putting on a Fruit Loop sticker. These are not Toucan Sam approved. He don't support Fruit Lies. Do you know when you accidentally refresh TikTok and you're three seconds into the best and divine video of your life? Here's how to find that video. Go to the discover page, then click search, type a little asterisk, then click the filter, the menu shows up, swipe on watched videos, then just tap apply. Ta-da! Those are all the videos you've seen. Wait! I'm trying this right now. I swear, if you gonna show me some Rickroll video. Um... Well, well, well! Here are my videos! Hey, that's pretty cool. Also, thinking about going through your man's phone, see what kind of TikToks he's been watching. Pretty good hack. Just saying. I see a video I like and then I accidentally swipe up and I'm like, I thought it was long lost. I ain't never gonna see it again. But you know. Fun facts about McDonald's. That life hack, get a fry with no salt, ask for salt at the window and get a fry fresh is bullshit. First of all, you can just ask for the fry made fresh and we'll make it fresh. Will you really? Will you really make my fries fresh if I just ask for it? I feel like that's, that's too good to be true. Maybe if you're nice about it, but also they can take the old fries and then put them in the fryer for a few seconds and then call it new fresh fries. Second of all, you know where you can just take the fries out of the fin and just put it back in the fryer for like five seconds and it burns all the salt off? 
So if you ask for unsalted fries, they'll literally unsalt your fries <laughs> by putting them back in the fryer. The secret menu doesn't exist. The only secret is that you can literally customize any item on the menu, basically, however you want, and we'll do it. You mean you don't sell cakes in the back with Ronald McDonald on it? I thought that was a secret menu. I, I still don't know the deal with that. 99.9% .9 of the time, the ice machine is not broken. There are three reasons why we usually do tell you the ice machine is broken. One, it's being cleaned. The ice machine is cleaned on the clock. No one comes in when we're closing and cleans it. Two, it's in heat mode, which is basically the ice cream in there is hot for whatever reason, so we can't use it. Three, if it's extremely busy and we're extremely understaffed, like I'm saying there's one person back here, a manager, one or two people in grill, and one person up front, and we're backed up with cars, a lot of the time, we'll just not serve ice cream until the rush is over. What if I come in on the rush wanting an ice cream? I ain't gonna get it. Ice cream machine broken. Also, what is all this about hot? Cream. You know, somehow I feel like they pour hot ice cream juice in the ice cream machine and then it like freezes it and then <laughs> it's ice cream. Was the ice cream once hot? I don't know. Also, y'all clean it every hour? So if you show up at like 7.01, no ice cream. 7.30, ice cream. Cool. Good to know. <laughs> So one of the reasons for the spiral handle design is so that you can pour carbonated beverages down it without- What? Stop! That's so cool! How did I not know this? This is incredible! I've seen this done so many times on TikTok when I see tutorials of people making a fancy drink and I'm like, wait, how do you pour soda without it splashing? So this is a bartender trick where they pour it along the spoon. That's a long spoon. Also, don't they like grab it with their hands? It's just make it go down smoothly. It's like a slide for your soda. Hey, is this how they do it? Is this how they put the lids on can? Oh, it's real messy. They waste a lot of liquid and then they just clean them off after? Like you didn't just waste all that soda? Chip companies need to be taking notes. See how they fill it to the top? They're like, no, you get half a bag of chips plus free air. You know, this just seems very messy to me. I'm sure actual factories are a little more organized <laughs> with a little less mess. At the Disney World Resorts, they make huge gingerbread houses and they're actually edible. Chefs made that. That is the biggest gingerbread house I have ever seen. How do people resist the urge not to like snatch some gingerbread every time they in the lobby? But anyways, after the holidays are over, they take it all apart and then they bring it to a farm and local bees in Florida get to feast on the house. Hey, they be eating good. Ugh, guess we'll eat the sugar so we can make our honey, you know, the superior sweetener. Hey, but they be eating good. They, be, they literally get to eat a whole house, but they do keep the structure so they can reuse it every year and build a new life-size gingerbread house. I want to go see this. All right, so you got this side. You got this side. Yeah. I was looking at it and I was going, what? No, there's none. Of <laughs> Another one. No. Why does this look illegal? It's like you got the big mouth, you got the shaker side, and then the, the mini shaker. Are none of these holes good enough for you? You gotta go ahead and make another hole. You know, just take the whole cap off. Y'all still do this at restaurants? Ugh. I have never seen anybody do this. Take the straw wrapper, add water, and it's alive! Ugh. Squirming. Literally looks like a worm. Toss it on your younger sibling. So you own vending machines? Yeah. Are you good at it? Oh my goodness, that is the like, cleanest, most organized, most aesthetically pleasing vending machine I have ever seen. Like it looks so good. All the ones I see it look like they shoved the Takis in their box against their will. So neatly organized. It's got a push to start button. Oh man, I love it when these things got tap to pay. No more struggling with putting in my bill five times and it's spinning it out. Y'all made that much money off vending machines? What? Now you didn't buy a Rolls Royce though. That is a $300 car. $300 car, I wish. $300,000 car. Hey, but keep vending. I have never heard of these being reversible. This has got to be in the new games or something. Okay, that actually looks sick. You can reverse it and make it look like you got a special edition of the game. All right, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. But anyways, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button in the face. Comment below something you learned today. And make sure you turn on notifications. Click, click, and subscribe to the Wolf Pack. Oh, I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.
cos'è la vinaccia? Precisiamo anche qual è questa materia prima che viene le caratteristiche anche rovinata, però capirete che la qualità della materia prima andrebbe con, come se fosse un grande insaccato di endemie più tardive di nebbiolo. What's up guys? Welcome back to the Daily Dropout. I'm Chris. Tonight I'm going to be asking girls, what's the hottest career that a guy can have? Morgan and Bailey, what is the hottest career that a man could have? I honestly think cops are really hot. What about them is so hot? I think it's just like the uniform and like the authority they have. Any man in uniform. It's like a cop, a firefighter, that sort of thing? Yes, but how does he dress out of the uniform? Any man making more than six figures. You know what, I do love a good stay at home dad because I love a daddy when I come home from work. Is it Dilf season? Is it dope season? Baby, it's always dope season. You want to make out? You know? I don't care what the career is. Like, if you're all in, all about chasing that bag, I'm into you. So no matter what I do, if I flip those hamburgers better than anybody else and I want to be the best, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, don't know. I don't know about that. I love me a firefighter. I love me a, I love me a firefighter, but I also love me a businessman. I was going to say that's an unpopular opinion, but I think cops or anyone in, like, the Navy, military, I think they're hot. CEO or CFO, but not toxic. The CEO of a particular company or just? Stay at home dad. Money making company. I like athletes. Yeah. Actually, I changed my mind. D1 athlete. Lawyer, doctor, trust fund baby. So I'm noticing a trend here. They're all tying into high earning. Yeah, a doctor. <laughs> what about a doctor? Just get you going. I'll let you guess on that one. <laughs> the Shark Tank guys are the sexiest man alive. So you're trying to date Mark Cuban? Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, Stability. <laughs> what are the least attractive careers? Garbage man. Garbage. Garbage. Garbage man. A garbage man. Why are you not messing with the garbage man? Because the So they might pick you up later. Ah, a plumber. <laughs> Why don't you like the plumbers? They make money. They do make good money, but like... And they deal with a lot of shit, so they can put up with your shit as well. The least attractive job? Probably like fast food. Trash guy. Janitor. What about them is unattractive? Belly. It's like a fast food. Oh, no, I don't know. An accountant. They're like they're just they're, they're just yeah. They just have there's a type of accountant. Strictly missionary only for accountants. Right. Anyone who makes a lot of money always has a lot of intelligence. If you have low intelligence, you don't make a lot of money. So would you ever be down to be a sugar baby? Yes. Stripper. I would never date a stripper. What about a stripper? What about her? See, that's the only thing. Like what? Like what makes you not want to date her? She in the strip club, niggas throwing ones. That's too much for me. Well, on OnlyFans, they're throwing digital ones. What do you mean? I was just capping when I said that, but that's different because I'm involved. They're throwing Bitcoin at her. Bob, though. Does your man need to make more money than you? Oh, 110%. Stay at home mom type vibes? What? Yeah, trophy wife. He needs to make at least as much as I'm, as much as I'm making, but I would prefer he makes more than me. No. That was profound. So if he has a good heart and it treats me right, then I'm okay because it's all about the quality and the guy and their like their intentions. So McDonald's but a good heart. Oh f no. <laughs> Is there a minimum amount of money a guy needs to make to date and potentially like marry you? No, I'm not that shallow. I think <laughs> I don't know what kind of athletes you've looked up, but they're pretty well off. I don't want a man that works. I want him. So you putting in the work from a nine to five on me, baby. That's what I want my man working doing. All right, I know what you're saying. You wanna be my nine to five, you can. I love that. You were amazing. It was a one question thing. Are you about to hook up? Huh? Are you and I about to hook up? Uh, I didn't plan on it. I've never had a kiss before, and I don't want my first one to be on the camera. Come 
All right, ready? All right, it's called the Daily Dropout. Check us oh out. Oh my God, Laura, I love her. Laura, I love you because you're so amazing because you have so much confidence. I love you, Laura. Laura, Laura, Laura. She's awesome. Just her, nobody else? What about that guy, Steven Shapiro? Yeah, uh, no, Laura. Laura's great because I, like, love her. <laughs> Danny? What? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and follow us on Instagram. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Alice Little and I'm a sex worker, sex educator, and intimacy expert. And this is Ask a Sex Worker, your chance to ask me, an actual factual sex worker, anything under the sun about sex, intimacy, communication, and connection. If you have a question that you'd like to see on a future episode, all you have to do is leave it in the comments below and I'll add it to my big box of questions where it may get featured on a future episode. With that being said, let's give her a shake shake and see what the question is this week. Let's see. We're gonna get a good one. Hmm. What percentage of your clientele is female? Ooh, fantastic question. Now, I'm sure people realize that the majority of folks who visit the legal brothels are indeed men. However, people are really surprised to find out that about 15% of the people I see do identify as female. My bedroom is open to everyone and everyone regardless of your gender presentation or sexual orientation or any other prerequisite various things. Like, I don't discriminate. I'm here for men. I'm here for women. I'm here for people who are intersex, trans, disabled, abled, you name it. I want to spend time with you. I'm not one to judge, and people are oftentimes really surprised about this, particularly female clients. Many female clients have a certain sense of, like, concern, you know, sharing themselves with another woman. They've never done it before, or they're maybe exploring their sexuality for their first time, or maybe there's some anxiety around comparisons. Personally, it's not a place for comparison. It's complementary. Everyone is complimentary. I'm complimentary with you, and you're complimentary with me. We go together, you know? There's no need to feel any stigma or shame around seeing a sex worker as a woman. In fact, I love, love, love spending time with female clients. I find that it's just such a wonderful change, something a little different. And this is particularly true with my couples. It's really fun to get to share that threesome experience and that whole, like, dynamic exchange. And well, threesomes are just kind of really hot. Of course. Book, book review, book, book review, book, book review, book, book, book. <laughs> We're back, baby. We're back at last. I read book. Now I tell you.
First off, we have I'm a Cat by Sos Soseki Natsume. It's a Japanese writer who spent some time in England and then he came back and then he published this in a magazine. Only, I think, the first chapter. He wasn't planning to make it into this beast that it is today. But people liked it so much that he kept publishing it and uh, yeah, maybe that's how you were supposed to read it. Just like in parts here and there. It is the story told from a cat. That's what I knew about it going in. And it's supposed to reflect on the Meiji period in Japan, which is transitional period between the westernization of Japan. At least that's what I thought. So I made one of these to make it uh, simple. So I, this is what I read. What I expected, some weird Meiji period stuff, you know, some commentary about it. Uh, some cat stuff, some sexy cats maybe, I, I don't know. The cat's name is Chibi, so I expected like a cute little Chibi cat. Uh, here's what I got. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's read this book is actually going like, yeah, that, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> so we have uh, some boomer uh, hating on his wife. This pretty much summarizes it right here. The cat kind of <laughs> just glancing. Uh, we got some jam. We got a fat cat. We got angry uh, Japanese men and something about a glass bowl. I, I don't really get it. <coughs> Guys, check out new G Fuel while we're at it. So this book is a satire. It's a very old satire, but that doesn't stop it from being enjoyable, just like Don Quixote or any other book that is well written, you know? The fact that this is Soseki's uh, first novel is incredible because it's, you know, it's up there. After reading this, it feels like a hidden classic, uh, like a hidden gem. Uh, that's what I thought at least because I've, I've never heard about it before and I've done that mistake in the past where just because I haven't heard of a book before, <laughs> That doesn't mean no one else has. <laughs> I'm like, no one's talking about this book with a Nobel Prize Award writer. But uh, no, that's not the case. But I, I did look into it and uh, it clearly left an impact on uh, in Japanese culture. So the Japanese title is Wagahai Neko. So I am a cat. Wagahai being a pronoun that I, I thought is, is so unusual that it doesn't normally exist. So bowser uses it for example here referring to himself in high regard same with the the cat in persona 4 so Siki also is depicted in the anime boys something i don't remember and he's also in phoenix Wright ace attorney look at it uncanny so he clearly left an impact on on japanese culture uh hello friends it's me and him today we're checking out some people who didn't see it coming they say don't touch don't touch the glass. Don't bang on the glass at an aquarium. Stop it. Stop it, you are- ah! <sighs> I just blew him back. I gotta watch that again. Like, did a shark actually just like attack? <gasps> Knock them into another dimension. When you started tapping on the glass, is that what you wanted? Did you want a shark to attack? No, I just wanted him to come say hi. You know, maybe hold hands, but they ain't even got hands. This was the next best thing. Y'all wanna see something cool? Yeah. All right, come on. <laughs> okay. My friend's getting it. She's wearing a tied shirt in and she's eating right Takis. So this must up. end badly. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she was somehow gonna end up in the water. Like, it, was that the cool thing you were gonna show me? The branch just disconnected. That looked like a sturdy tree. The fact that it just snapped in half. That tree took one whiff of the Takis and unalived itself. Couldn't handle all that seasoning. Hey, everybody's running on the treadmill, right? And she just walk up and how does that even happen? Oh, it was on. Unfortunate. Like, do you not see the treadmill is on? It is running. You know, somebody thought it would be real funny to leave the treadmill running and then get off. Maybe some unsuspecting fool will trip on it. Oh, this woman saw her fall and started running faster. <laughs> Maybe if I run faster, this won't happen to me. Look, so you have it. <gasps> no! <laughs> Why did you just eat it like that? It's a jelly bunny dessert. Look, so you have it. <laughs> oh, she just inhaled it <laughs> and regurgitated it. I mean, what is the proper way to eat one of these? Do you bite the head off first so they can no longer see or feel the pain? <laughs> oh no, I feel bad eating like animal shaped things. So I, I like to eat the head off first. Does it make it better? Probably not. So basically, uh, I was wondering if I could buy this for like twenty thousand dollars in cash, just your like stand. You want to buy this? Yeah, I'd like to buy it. That's not like a good deal, right? You know those stands on the beach? She's just selling like souvenirs and whatever. And he offered her twenty thousand dollars. You want to buy my stamp for twenty thousand dollars? Yeah, does that work? 
deal uh, done? For $20,000. Yeah, yeah. Is that a good deal? or $20,000 after everything that I put into it. You know how many years I spent on this freaking car? You know how much I put into this? I, I'm sorry if I... No, no. You I'm come up here you. with your $20,000? No. You can take that. You can put it back in your pocket and you can walk back to your mommy. You know, there's a police right there. I'll call them. No. For, no. For I can't what? be hassled with this. Why are you hassling me with this? I'm sorry. No. No. I'm 20, sorry. No. $20,000. You know how many people? It's not just me on this pier. You see him? Do you see everybody else? You know how much yeah, they yeah, put yeah. here? I'm sorry you know how if much I offended they you. Like, I'm actually sorry. No, no. You, can you step back, uh, please? I'm... Wow. You know, a simple no thank you would have sufficed. But it's like you insulted her whole entire family tree. You know how much work I put into this? Uh, ma'am, you are selling wooden live, love, laugh signs. I look at this. I'm like, no way. All of this could cost $20,000. Maybe the actual cart itself. But like all those stickers and like keychains and stuff. Like $20,000. Sounds like a good deal. So they were waiting for their food to be delivered and they were checking the app of the driver's location. And it looks like the driver is drifting, coming at you sideways to your location. Oh, turns out he crashed. Uh oh. Oh no. I hope they were okay. But did you get your food though? Hey guys, I ran away from my family last year and a lot of people have been asking for a tutorial on how to run away. As a 17 year old, you don't have to run away like this. This is just how I ran away. Wait, that's it? <laughs> Tutorial, how I ran away. Quite literally. Just right across the street, fast as I could. And she didn't even bring nothing with her. Not a suitcase. You know, you're supposed to get one of those rolling luggage. Make sure you keep looking back for somebody to come out and stop you. Never see this face again. Come here. Ran. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, oh no, oh, no. Is it that? Oh! The child was going too fast. <laughs> Why is she running like a leprechaun? Come here. Ran. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Who oh, just robbed the pot of gold? <laughs> Toddler, not very aerodynamic. Catch this with your head, I'll buy you anything. Ready? Go. Oh, easy. Oh. Ah, uh, you missed it. You gotta say what head? Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> he got that gorilla grip. Please be hands, please be hands, please be hands. Uh, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> before anything happened. Okay, there's glass. Because for a second, I, I don't know why, for some reason I thought the water ends where the glass ends, but the whole wall is glass. That's why she was so confident. So like, yeah, this, this is fine. I'm safe. She didn't even flinch. That bear really went in like, he just went on a high five. You know, you want a viral TikTok? I'll give you one. <gasps> I thought it was a toddler. I thought it was a very meaty baby. It's a dog, it's a husky. How do they fit him in that? Why does he fill it so well? Fill it like a toddler. Oh, if it wasn't for the face, you would have had me convinced. So you know these street performers that look like statues, right? He's pretending to be a statue. She goes up to him, tries to shake his hand. Oh, psych. Oh. Hey, hey, wait. Wait. <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to come off of his post. And you can't do that. You're not supposed to move. You're supposed to stay there. You're literally a statue. But I want to shake your hand. Hey, next time, don't juke him like that. This is what activated my fighter flat. I see this dude run after me. I will. Bring him. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I thought he was dead. They do that, though. Where's the ball? They always be playing dead. Yo, so dramatic. <laughs> Nah, he fine, he fine, he fine. He just wanted attention. Playing dead for the TikTok. OMG, did you thrift those jeans? Yes. How could you tell? <gasps> oh, <laughs> wait a second. I thought they were like a perfect fit. You found the perfect baggy jean. Uh-uh. It's a romper. <laughs> hey, you could fit a whole other person in there. Me at 11 years old. I'll just pull this one hair out. It's not a big deal. It wasn't just one hair. She developed severe trichotillomania. She now has a huge bald spot and dangerously low self-esteem. Hey, I've heard about this. I knew somebody in school, in elementary school, she would keep pulling out her hairs. Like she would just like in class, just separate, just, just one hair, just like, <laughs> hair. This is going to my hair collection. But I have never actually seen it this bad where she actually pulled out a whole entire bald spot. Ooh. Girl, it's okay. Just put it up into a ponytail. If you have like arm hairs, you can get like tweezers. Pluck them out instead. More satisfying. Or like, what if she got a job like plucking people's eyebrows? Then you'd be like plucking all day. What is growing in my front lawn? 
and something's coming out of the snow. It is emerging in real time. You got a monster? WTF? Uh, whatever was hibernating for the winter under there is coming out. Winter ain't even over yet. Yeah, I would be scared. <laughs> what is that? It's not an <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh, it is an inflatable. <laughs> Don't you feel silly? Don't you feel stupid? <laughs> Who's sitting here recording? Like a groundhog was gonna come out the ground. Nope, it's just Santa. A couple of months late. Sorry, no presents this year. We got snowed on. I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not this. <laughs> okay, so TikTok taught me that if you take off the bottom piece of the blender, you don't have to wash all this. You can just pop it on here. So something like oh. this. Watch. It's all it ready. It's on the top. So let's see if it works. How did it fit? Okay. I mean, it makes sense, right? Oh, no. Oh, man. The things we do to save us from washing one dish. <sighs> now we got a whole kitchen of broken glass smoothie to clean instead. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Don't need those anymore. Feel better soon. Oh, who got a boo boo? Hey, there's nothing wrong with that yeah, surface. Yeah. Oh, I think you're gonna need a bigger band aid. Don't worry, band aids heal all wounds except this one. They're doing a TikTok. No laughing, no talking, only sound. What do you mean, only sound? I'm already gonna laugh. Like, shh. Oh, like that. <coughs> Only no screen. Karen's when they start losing an argument. I don't care what logic or points you have to make, the loudest one wins. Huh, who's at the door? When your neighbor catches you fangirl out over Ooh, Amazon. Ooh, Amazon. <laughs> Oh, he's still there! At least y'all are laughing about it. I would've shut the door, started peeking through the window, waiting for him to leave. I never answer my door. I never want anybody to see me get my packages from the front door, pick up my food or anything. Like, I don't exist. Hey, don't open that. Unless you're alone, winky face. A shortcut to the chum bucket. From Grace. Hm, that must be for me. <laughs> this isn't the chum bucket. Uh, <laughs> Why you always by yourself? Dang, she got you good. What did you think it was gonna be? Hi everyone, I've been seeing the British accent challenge everywhere. So I thought I would give it a shot, see if I can do the British accent You justice. got a fat bunda okay, so still? One, you got a fat bunda still. What does that even I don't mean? Know what that means, but I'll try it. Um, you got a fat bunda still. Hey, wait, 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 that, that was a whole different person right there. I don't know what that means, but I'll try it. Um, you got a fat bunda still. Uh, <laughs> what the? How are you doing that? Do you mean like a Mercedes or, okay, let me try it. Um, Just a Benz and that. Uh, I don't know what any of this means. Um, I don't number either. three. Wugwan G, you look Lang. I don't know if Lang is good or bad, but let me try it. Um, Wugwan G, you look Lang! <laughs> I don't even know what any of this means. I think Lang means you look good. Very attractive. Oh, I was not expecting this dude to just have a very specific British alter ego and just flip a switch and turn into that person. That's weird. I've been pulled over three times today, all because of my truck. Look at the size of a- How do you climb into that thing? You got a magical staircase, descend from the truck? That is huge! Why do you need six tires? I mean, is that thing street legal? So this is what I thought happened to me. I lost my brand new Apple Pencil. I'd had it for two days. I unmade my entire bed. We uh, like looked inside the couch. We went through the trash and the recycling and we just couldn't find it anywhere. Hey, is this a problem? Because I keep losing my Apple Pen and it's finally gone. Can't find it. After three days of d utter despair, 
I found it. Where? It was on the corner of the wall. The Apple Pen has a magnet in it and it attaches to like weird surfaces. Like you can attach it to your laptop, you can attach it to your tablet, but it attached to the hecking wall. Okay, I gotta check my walls. Unfortunately, they are all white, but like this is a problem. If you're spending $200 for a pencil, why can't you like see the location of it? I got back home and found a full cast filming a whole show at my house. Did nobody tell you? Like, how do you just walk in on this? If they got cameras, they got a whole crew. Can't get no privacy in this house. What show is it? Are they having dinner without you too? <laughs> but anyways, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button in the face and comment below the craziest one. And make sure you turn on notifications. Click, click. And make sure you subscribe to the Wolf Pack. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.
Yakuza are much more than just an underground criminal organization like the Mafia or a radical video game franchise. Their history goes back centuries, and while their influence has ebbed and flowed, one thing that has remained constant is the Yakuza's enduring adaptability. So, today we're going to take a look at the surprising history of the Yakuza, or the Yakuza, whichever one you like. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, we'd be much obliged if you would leave a comment and let us know what other criminal organizations you would like to hear about, okay? Time to count all your fingers and strap in for a quick tour of the Japanese criminal underworld. The origins of the Yakuza name tell the story of the foundations of the group itself. Comprising of three separate parts, Ya, Ku, and Za, Yakuza translates to good for nothing or born to lose. The name is basically a Springsteen song. When you split it up, however, it becomes 893, the name of a losing hand in a popular card game called Hanafuda, which is comparable to blackjack. The Yakuza grew out of a gambling and peddling culture in Japan tracing back to the 18th century, but they see themselves as based in a much older tradition. Yakuza members consider themselves to be part of a Ninkyo Dantai, or chivalrous organization, with links to the earliest days of the Muromachi and Edo periods. The Muromachi period, which lasted from 1138 to 1573 CE, and the Edo, or Tokugawa period, which lasted from 1603 to 1867 CE, was home to Ronin, wandering samurai without lords. Ronin, like Ishikawa Goemon, were outsiders who stole from the rich, gave back to the poor, and avenged wrongdoing in Japan. And while that certainly sounds like something to aspire to, in reality, the only thing the Yakuza really gives back to the community is racketeering and extortion. And there's no gift receipt, so good luck returning it. Still, the image is appealing to plenty of people. At its peak in 1963, the Yakuza had roughly 183,000 members. Because data about crime syndicates in Japan wasn't available before 1958, the numbers prior to this peak are unknown. The Yakuza was at the height of its power in the mid-20th century, thanks in part to the CIA and its relationship with Yoshio Kodama. Kodama was a political revolutionary prior to World War II and operated in China as a Japanese spy throughout the conflict. Along with collecting information for Japan, Kodama accumulated wealth through a network of back-channel operations, violent acts, and connections with the Japanese underworld. It was like sending Tony Soprano to infiltrate an enemy nation. According to a CIA report, Kodama was blood brother to a number of the Yakuza, but that didn't stop the agency from enlisting him to serve as a contact in Asia during the late 1940s. The CIA also funded the Liberal Democratic Party in Japan, a political group within which Kodama exhibited immense power and influence. With the CIA and the Yakuza on his side, he became an extremely influential undercover man in conservative and financial circles by the 1960s. As an intermediary between the Japanese underworld and legitimate authorities, Kodama developed a reputation akin to a mafia godfather. During the mid-1970s, however, a scandal involving Lockheed Aircraft Corporation, Kodama, and the Japanese government brought the Yakuza powerhouse under scrutiny. He was indicted for tax evasion and violating international exchange laws, but he died in 1984 before any verdict was issued. That's one way to beat a rap. That man was a master strategist. The Yakuza is a patriarchal organization that mirrors Japanese society as a whole. In it, the Oyobun is the boss as well as a parental figure. Under the Oyobun are the Kobun, apprentices who are essentially seen as children. The Oyobun-Kobun relationships binds all Yakuza members and includes specific responsibilities. However, unlike most parent-child relationships, these responsibilities are less doing the dishes and more destroying your father's enemies. The Oyobun mentors his Kobun to kill others or even kill themselves for the sake of the Oyobun, which is slightly more more extreme than what fathers tell their kids when the neighbors return the lawnmower with an empty gas tank, but only slightly. According to one former Yakuza Kobun, when you're a Yakuza, people are always watching you. 
Think of yourself as being on stage all the time. It's a performance. If you're bad at playing the role of a Yakuza, then you're a bad Yakuza. This performance has strict rules. One of the most important rules for members is to keep their tattoos private, like a college freshman coming home for winter break. This is done mostly out of respect, because Japanese culture generally frowns on tattooing. Members of the Yakuza get tattoos to demonstrate their loyalty as well as their ability to withstand pain. Once associated with punishment, the tattoos attest to a tradition dating to the 3rd century that holds men both great and small tattoo their faces and work designs upon their bodies. Yakuza tattoos take years to complete, cost thousands of dollars, and are on areas of the body that one wouldn't expose to the public. Mm-hmm even those places. Another act of body modification practiced by Yakuza members is called pearling, which involves inserting small beads or pearls under the skin of your genitalia, with each bead or pearl representing a year in prison. Eh, yeah, that's cool, guys, but uh, I think I'll try to stay out of prison. One of the most notorious and cringe-inducing practices associated with the Yakuza is yubitsume, or finger shortening. It began as a punishment used by Japanese gamblers, known as bakuto, Yubitsume was performed when a serious offense had taken place, but not quite serious enough for banishment or execution. It was designed to weaken one's hand, essentially making the offender more dependent upon his boss. Yubitsume commonly involves the self-amputation of the top joint on one's pinky finger. It's intended to be an apology in lieu of words, because nothing says I'm sorry like chopping off your own pinky. Most Yakuza members are too proud to outright apologize or beg for forgiveness to the point that yubitsume is the preferred option. Evidence suggests that the practice of yubitsume is not as common as it once was. But in 1993, data indicated 45% of Yakuza members had lost at least one finger. Out of those, 15% undertook the ritual two times or more. At that point, I'm guessing the problem is you, not the yubitsume. And because sometimes yubitsume just isn't enough, there's also shuniyubi, which entails the loss of an entire finger to preempt a more severe punishment. For six years, French photographer Chloe Jaffe documented the lives of women married to members of the Yakuza. However, before she could start, she had to get permission from a Yakuza boss. That step alone might have scared off most people. Going straight to an underworld kingpin and asking him if you can photograph his operation might end with you at the bottom of a reservoir, and a whole bunch of people saying, I told you so. But the boss was impressed by Jaffe's determination and slowly opened his doors to her. Jaffe soon discovered that while women can't officially become Yakuza themselves, a woman who has married a member of the Yakuza is absolutely part of the group. She explains that Yakuza wives live like most housewives in Japan, but their specific attachments to their husband's connections depend on his status in the organization. For instance, leaders' wives serve as consultants and manage finances, although usually through an intermediary. Women also get tattoos comparable to Yakuza members, but according to Jaffe, they are more like armors, omamori in Japanese. They are protections. The women are also bound by similar rules. They keep their tattoos hidden, and once they are connected with the organization, they find it very difficult to leave. Michael Corleone had it right. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Shoko Tendo, the daughter of a Yakuza member, admitted that while she hated the way my father behaved, I became just like him. Violence, drugs, and turmoil defined her early life. But looking back, she would later say she wouldn't have lived any other way. The largest Yakuza subset is the Yamaguchi Gumi. In 2015, roughly 100 years after it was established, the Yamaguchi Gumi organization fractured into two separate groups. The offshoot, Kobe Yamaguchi Gumi, formed its own organization, although it later split into three smaller groups. The main outcome of this initial split was a violent civil war that has lasted more than five years. Authorities in Japan established an entire agency to try to quell the violence that erupted during the Yamaguchi Gumi War. Similar to how the FBI was established to deal with the growing organized crime problem in the U.S., officers patrolled near schools, arrested members of both groups en masse, and monitored the rebellion faction's headquarters in Kobe, but were unable to prevent assassinations and violence. Despite years of fighting, members of the two groups appeared to make amends in 2021, signaling what may be the end of the war. Fingers crossed. Except for, you know, those who have done Ubitsume.
The sake ritual is a ceremonial exchange between kobun and their oyabun. A full sake ceremony includes a mix of fish, salt, and sake, along with a kobun, oyabun, and intermediaries called azukarinin. With the kobun and oyabun facing each other while sitting at a Shinto shrine, they exchange sake cups and recite their duties to each other in a formal pledge. The sake symbolizes blood and establishes lifelong bonds. But from the perspective of Satoru Takagaki, a former Yamaguchi Gumi boss, the civil war within the organization has fundamentally changed the Yakuza. According to him, when the Yamaguchi Gumi split apart, the Yakuza world had to reassess the meaning and importance of the bond cemented by ritual sake drinking. Takagaki felt that, when you ignore the precepts and rationale of the Yakuza world, you call into question the entire structure of the society. This is why no respectable Yakuza organization bonded with Kobe Yamaguchi Gumi. He believed that if one drank the sake and later became disenchanted with that oath of loyalty, then he should just leave the group and go straight. To put it another way, if you don't have the stomach to honor the pledge, then don't drink the sake. Oh boy, that wouldn't be the first time we shouldn't have drunk the sake. The Yakuza have taken steps over the years to try and soften their public image. As early as the 1960s, Yamaguchi Gumi leadership tasked the organization with combating amphetamine use. In 2014, Yamaguchi Gumi launched a website to help purify the nation as part of its ongoing Drug Expulsion of Land Purification Alliance initiative. The website put forward anti-drug messaging alongside a theme song that included the lyrics, With nothing but my courage and this body, I trust myself to the life of a Yakuza and follow this path I've decided on. In Nagoya, the Yamaguchi Gumi emblem is our life, dedicated to chivalry. That's the spirit of a man. We're not kidding, they really wrote a song. This toe-tapping jam was intended to emphasize masculinity and self-discipline, while downplaying the many crimes in which Yakuza members have been involved. According to journalist and Yakuza expert Jake Adelstein, the point of the website is to demonstrate that the Yamaguchi Gumi is actually a humanitarian organization. The Yakuza also publishes its own magazines. When it debuted in 2013, Yamaguchi Gumi Shinpo was a magazine with only eight pages. Proving that literally every organization on earth has a newsletter, it was printed for the roughly 27,000 members of the Yamaguchi Gumi group within the Yakuza, intended to communicate goals and policies from the top down. The publication included poetry and games, an essay by Yamaguchi Gumi boss Kiyoshi Takeyama, and a story about fishing. It's like a highlights magazine for tattooed gangsters with missing fingers. According to Adelstein, the magazine is the Yamaguchi Gumi's attempt to show the public that it's an old organization that upholds traditional Japanese values, that its members are not a bunch of violent thugs. This was not the first publication of this type issued by the Yakuza. From 1965 to 1975, Yamaguchi Gumi Jiho was in print, similarly distributed among thousands of its namesake's members. Yakuza membership has been on a decline since the early 2000s. Japan's National Police Agency estimated roughly 26,000 full-time and associate members at the end of 2019. That's just 14% of the numbers the Yakuza had in its ranks during its mid-20th century peak. The world has not seen a steeper membership drop since the Kirk Cameron Fan Club. And in 2020, the group saw lower numbers for the 16th year in a row. However, as Adelstein noted in 2017, they aren't just vanishing, they're transforming. One former Yakuza boss explained, the Yakuza are a franchise. You pay your association dues to borrow the power and menace of the group. Fear makes people pay you. But if you can't use the name or the symbol, why even stay? It's like running a McDonald's without being able to use the golden arches. Better to cut expenses and leave. We're not vanishing, we're restructuring. That sounds like a quote from the CEO of MoviePass. And while there's something appealing about a fearsome criminal organization adopting the corporate jargon of an imploding tech startup, unfortunately for the Yakuza, their restructuring has been negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, with numerous businesses no longer to pay Mikaji Merio, or protection money. They're presumably placing a temporary hold on all leg breakings until these business owners can get back on their feet. So what do you think? Which of these facts about the Yakuza Thank <laughs> you.
slightly numb until now it's obviously because i spent three hours this morning just riding on stop but anyways i'm home now at least i actually only have one midterm left um which is tomorrow i have to do the same exact thing i did this morning i have a cinema and media history final where once again i have to write two 750 word papers but there's not much i can do to prepare for those because we don't have access to like any notes or anything. But yeah, at least after that, I'm done with midterms. Um, I don't really have any other assignments for the rest of the week that I haven't done already. I had my English midterm last week. Um, it didn't go so well. I mean, I haven't gotten my grade back yet, but I'm just not feeling very optimistic. watch doesn't match my outfit I have to wear it because I want to know what time it is when I'm doing my exam all right I've got everything so it's time to go
Yes, people, NASCAR has come west. With a pair of Los Angeles events and a progressive new approach to branding, the company is trying to bring out a woker California crowd. Be careful what you wish for, NASCAR. Posing as Biden supporters, Leo and I are gonna make old guard NASCAR fans think their worst nightmare has come true. Forecast today, 60% chance of getting punched. Please give us a like for moral support. And for Kamala Harris, right, Leo? For Kamala, for Kamala, for Kamala. We gotta get into character now, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got just called me a <laughs> Let's go, Biden! Let's go! Let's go, Biden! Let's go! Come on, everybody! Let's go, Biden! Let's go! Biden won! Get over it! Get over it! It, you racist bastards! He won! He won! Fair and square! Joe Biden is the best. I am from Cuba and I can say that Joe Biden, he changed my life. He changed my life. Hey, you with the sunglasses over there and the crossed arms. Cuba's economic policies are far superior to ours. What do you got to say about that? Middle fingers? Hey! Free health care! It's a right! It's a right! Hey, Mr. Ponytail, check your privilege and get out of the street. Uh oh, these guys. Hey, don't, don't, we don't. You really want to fuck them? Hey, drink I, a smear off ice right. and chill out. I, in Cuba, in Cuba, That's we can come. Why don't you shut the Cuba? Shut the fuck up, Cuba. Fuck you, Nazi. Thank you. Hey, I'm, I'm not, not a fucking Nazi. Nazi. Yeah, you He's are, man. Biden's a fucking Nazi. You guys, you guys go home. He's intervening in our fucking. You take the 82nd Airborne. You probably parachuted in to spread fascism. That's right. Let me start fascism now. Uh, fascism? No, if you take no, one no, more no, step, no, I'm gonna no, blow no, my rape no, whistle. No, no, I'm gonna no, blow no, my rape no, whistle no, if you get anywhere no, near no, me. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? What are you doing? What are you doing? Spill my fucking smear off! <laughs> Wearing a checkered shirt is a total dog whistle, dude! Quit dog whistling the alt right! You cannot be racist! <laughs> Damn it, dude! We're in character! We're undercovered! Please, you're my We're undercovered! Do any of you have a moment to talk about critical race theory with us? It's crap! No, it's not. Let's look at the SAT test. The UC system says it will drop the standardized testing requirement for admissions. We think the SAT is racist and it favors people of white, double parent households. Sir, in the Let's Go Brandon shirt, let me ask you this. Would it be fair? I wondered if you were gonna catch the shirt. Oh my God, it's just such an unbelievable 
moment. Brandon, you also told me, as you can hear the chants from the, the crowd, let's go, Brandon. What does FJB stand for? I have no idea. Is that like favorite jelly bean? I know what I mean. <laughs> I know what that means. I'm a vanilla cherry kind of guy. One. That's a good one. Let me ask you this, Mr. Let's Go Brandon. Would it be fair if NASCAR races were won by the fastest driver? Yes. Yeah. No, it actually, it wouldn't be because people from racing disadvantaged backgrounds, like Asian women in the Amish, don't have equal opportunity. Instead of standardized testing, which favors children of privileged backgrounds, we should introduce something like, uh, like this. The children paint a watercolor depicting their sexual identity. This is Gleep. Gleep is a non-binary first grader we work with. And this is they getting pounded by a drunken truck driver on a full moon night. Hello, Harvard, huh, baby? Hello, Harvard. Am I in? Yeah, you're in. I'm in. Do you know where you're at? I know. That's where Fontana. You're at. This redneck fucking conservative parking lot you could ever be in right now. So you can't say it's normal for a fucking kid to be getting smashed by a truck driver. Like, that's not normal. You know that's not normal. Hey, hey, He's okay, really giving it to him, man. He's really giving it to him, man. Yeah, I know. I see that. But, like, that's not, doesn't mean it's a normal or okay. Or see what they that's like? They, they use the word normal. No, racist. No, oh. no. Racist, too. Everything racist, But that, you could kind of say that about everything. You could say, like... Even tying your shoes can be racist. No, no, if you do the two no, loops, no, wait, if you do the two loops, the two loops are racist. Get out of my chair. Thank you very much. It's like... Because the two loops, it's code for hail Hitler when he did two loops. It's, ha it's hail Hitler, right, man? Yeah. Second of all, if we can't do away with the test completely and use the watercolor method, we have some alternative questions that don't favor people from certain backgrounds. Tyrone sells Demarcus three vials of crack before dicking down a white bitch in a trap house. If he goes to Foot Locker, if he goes to Foot Locker and steals a pair of Jordans, how much should we defund the police? Twenty-five bucks. That's not bad. I think that's a good question. That's a good deal. It's a little low. We had to add a couple zeros, but hey. hey. Party on, Party on, baby. Can I get a throw? He's cool. <laughs> Stupid fascist sport. I'm born racist. Yeah. I get along with black people, get along with white people. But if you eat. You call them Orientals. See, you do have racial issues. What are you supposed to call him? You're supposed to call him Asiatics. No, no way. Asiatic, no, he's not that the word. He's Asian. Is, is it Asian X? Hey. Asian X. Hey, Asian X. Hey, just, um, just go we're going to have to get rid of this tape. We don't yeah, look good in this. Out. Can we show you a couple books no, that we think should be mandatory out. reading for the youngsters? Have you ever taken a look at the books that your kids are being assigned in school? Have you actually read them? You guys trolling right now? No, dude. We're talking about required reading in first grade classrooms. Joe Biden promises to keep is just one. You got. A Virginia school system has suspended circulation of two books after a mother expressed concern about their explicit material. Both of these books include pedophilia. Please. There are children no. in the audience here. Do not like interrupt children. my time. To introduce children to the concept of bestiality, which we feel is completely natural, What's we have heavy like petting. Like animals animals and yeah, like these. Look, Look at this. <laughs> Second graders are gonna have to read this all over the great California state. He's uh, that's a big one, huh? It's a big horse penis. That's yeah. a big one. Listen, hold on, let me. Let me yeah, yeah, he's gotta make his point make here. Make my point really quick. Mm -hmm. Yes, fucker. I was gonna make a good point. Take a, take a look. I mean, I'm looking at a fucking 18 foot horse dick and like a. a, a it's about to go in Wendy. Okay. Hold, here's why I'm trying to make my point. Okay. That. Uh, this, that decision he's giving it to him, man. He's okay, giving it to him. I can't tell you something if you're telling me. Sorry I, I about that. I understand that. I understand that. He gets it. He's giving it to him. He gets that Gleep is getting it. it to they, him. they, they. He's giving it to they. him. They. It's giving he's it giving to him. No, no. And it's she's, she's giving it to they. She, she wants to. She's giving it to they. Okay, but listen. She wants to accept the horse dick. Granted, like he wants to get fucked by a trucker. Granted, not the best. Decision. They wants to get they fucked by a trucker. Freely. No, Just no. use the proper pronouns, and you can say whatever you want. They, they. She is, go or he. I'm, they. No, it doesn't matter like that. It I, does. It's not to me. I, I can genuinely respect you for. Can you just get everybody's gender once more? Do a rundown of everybody's gender. She, horse, him, and him. No, oh, they. Oh, they. 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 I hope this is a bunch of Biden supporters that need to go wee wee right here. It's all about Biden. It's all about Dale Jr. Fuck Dale Jr. He's racist. Put your mask. Put your mask. Biden won. Get over it. You're trying to make it sound like they stole the election. I don't know if it was stolen, but there's some shady shit going on. No. 
Yeah, the people showed up in droves to vote for Biden, yeah, the greatest yeah, president yeah, we've yeah, ever had. In droves to go to his pet rallies. You get like 200 people there. I was there front row. I bet we you were. were. There we were a ton were, of people. We crowd least, surfed. There were at least 300 people. At least, at least. yeah, at least. 300 well, people. I was just in Arizona at a Trump rally. And yeah. There was about maybe 5,000. Wait, 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 wait. In. Where were you? Arizona. Why were you at a what? At a why, Trump rally. Why, why would you go see the? Why would you go see that man? Fucking, this hurts me, man. You do you do something like this? This is why the world can change because people like no, you. I'm trying to help you guys change, bro. <laughs> Trump, what, you guys think he's a racist? Yeah, he is a racist. Wait, not why? Because he, he wall? because he like he um build a wall. because he's mean. You guys are funny. You guys are really Trump supporters, man. Yeah, you guys are Trump supporters. I got hey, get you. back here! Hey, get back here! Hey. <laughs> I love that guy, dude. That guy was tight. Should we get a Let's Go Biden going right here? Oh my God, I hate you, man. Nico, stay, Nico, stay away from us. Let's go, Biden! Let's go! 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 Yeah! Let's go, Biden! Oh my god, dude. I hate you, dude. Why do we gotta do that? We can dude? do this endlessly, just pop up like moles. Dude, yeah, let's get let's get in the, let's get to that where that grandstand is. Yeah, this is great. This is unreal. This is unreal, dude. I have to I have to I'm gonna have to look at the crowd the whole time just in case. Is this the national anthem? I can't tell. Yeah, it is, obviously. So after this is gonna be an explosion of booze, I'm thinking. Put your hands, fuckers! Just instruments of white supremacy and death with wings. Are uh, you just flipping everybody off now? Thanks, Danny, thanks. We needed some more heat on us. We needed some more heat. Come on, man. Oh, this guy's gonna come down. This guy's coming down. Dude, let's get the fuck out of here. Hey, Leo, should we duck it? Let's duck it. A very high stakes escape. Whew. Nico, I'm sorry we had to bail on you. Leo and I thought if we use the designated exits, we're fucked. And we scattered like roaches, Leo. We did. We did. But we're safe. Cockroaches survive. They'll be here after the apocalypse. That's right. And so will Leo and so Danny, baby. Will we. Because uh, this is a redneck themed video, who is more redneck in our crew than Mudflap? We're going <laughs> to take him up to his natural environment and we're going to do some redneck stuff for a little bit. Come along, the video's not over. How's it going? Have we met before? I think so. We met at the gym. You saw this guy get beaten by a woman in jujitsu. I did, yeah. <laughs> Mike, so this thing does judo. That's what I've heard. I've heard this donkey does judo. He looks really strong and kind of violent. Uh, like I heard you put a gi on and he uses the gi against you. Is I've never true? done it with the gi, but I bet you he would. Chad, you've been telling me about the gi thing. 
Yeah, I said that uh, he we were gonna put He'll a do it with my on, jacket. But he normally uses his jacket. Yeah, he normally uses like my jacket, but I bet you he would do it. And he throws you to the ground, Mike? Oh yeah, he yeah, Mudflap yeah. brought a special jacket. I brought, I brought my car just like that so I could try it out. Yeah, he Let's wants do it. To... How much does he weigh, Mike? Probably he's a bigger burrow, so I would say he probably weighs oh close to six hundred pounds. Oh, what? My God. Yeah, he's at least every bit yeah, of five. He looks lighter than you, much. Dude, I, I would have guessed lighter than me too. Oh, we're gonna do it. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. oh, my gosh. Oh, shit. You're going in there. I'm gonna remember the basics. Scissor sweep, hip escape, Americana. Remember, don't get behind him. That's the one rule. Nico? Who knows jujitsu better, me or you? The, the, the kick could just kill you, right? <laughs> oh my god! Oh shit! Dude, that's kind of scary, dude. This guy fucks members of your kind. This guy has wedged his filthy penis into so many sheep hunkies. Hey, I'm on your side, buddy. Why are you trying to bite me? This guy, this guy hops into pastures and has sex with your women at night. Now he know he knows I'm on his team. No. He's seen mud flat. That's because you share ancestors, probably, you donkey <laughs> fucking SOB. You guys no, see that? no. Oh, fuck. Why? Why does he not like me? Hello, Jacko! Oh! <laughs> oh! Offer him this. No, he bit me! He bit me! No, no, no! Mud help! Mud help! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Mudflap, watch out. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a rodeo clap. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is he so... Hey, uh, Mike, what do you think about the idea? I was running it by um, Leo over here. Leo fancies himself something of an alpha male, something of a coxman. Since there's a donkey that hasn't been castrated yet, what if the two of them had an alpha off? Mmm, I'm not gonna comment on any of that. Dude, yeah, but you don't know about the details of an alpha off. No, no. An, an alpha off is when Leo gets completely naked <laughs> and approaches the donkey, shaking his manhood at him. Mm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pass on that idea. Leo, why do you keep proposing this creepy I'm material? sorry, I, I wanted to do that because it's like some kind of, a, it's a little bit of a fantasy of mine, but... You yeah. need my... I, I was gonna yell, you need my big dick at it. It's funny because donkeys have big dicks. He's probably, he has a bigger dick than me, for sure, so... You know. What's the cattle prod challenge? Is that where you just get shot with a cattle prod? I'm down. Yeah, let's do that. What's the That's cattle easy. prod? Can we break a rib and do that? Or? No, no, no. Cattle prods is a, is a taser for cattle. Well, I mean, it's non-lethal to cows, and you weigh slightly more than the average cow. You know <laughs> Maybe what? You, you guys do. know what it is, let me go get it out and I'll show. I'll yeah, show you guys. Well, there's only one oh, way to find out if it works. Yeah, it's working. Okay. I, w I think in post we'll add in the... If it doesn't have that. I feel like we should do this ceremonially. Like, Mudflap should come out of a barn on all Mudflap, fours. I have your phone. We should do a little scene. Me, right? Chester, I don't know how I'd make it through the day without some good old Copenhagen in my mouth. It's one of God's greatest creations. Hey, Betsy! God damn it. What are you doing out of the barn? Right. Man, get her. You better wrangle that bitch up. <laughs> Does that work? I'm bad at it. Okay, first of all, Mudflap is way faster than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Look at the Copenhagen does to Danny, dude. Look at this. <laughs> Why do you do this? <laughs> well, Chuck, the fucking Copenhagen. To make you feel, make you feel alive. Make you feel like you're high without actually being high. It makes me feel like I'm gonna throw up. Put hair on your chest. It puts stomach acid in my mouth. Well, Bob, you want to race just from that end to this end? Half the thing. We'll go from, how about this? We'll cut the thing in half. Go. Wow. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, fuck. Mudflap, do we need a, do we need to call an ambulance? Okay. Are you sure you didn't break a collarbone or? Hey, my head pretty hard. God damn it. I'm gonna need some ice. Okay. Oh. sit down on your butt. Okay. Where's that course? I'm gonna get him the course. Is that your collarbone okay? Just do me a favor. I thought you hit that shit. 
and subscribe to Mudflap. Yeah, subscribe. Uh, to Mudflap. That's fair. And um, Ian, do him a favor and Bro. Photoshop that to make it look like he won. It's gonna hurt a lot. Hey. Immediate. Okay, he's maybe concussed and might have a broken collarbone. I had chewing tobacco. I had chewing tobacco. Yeah, I think you're even then, yeah. Oh my god. And I think I got the brunt of the donkey attack. After all of that, a foot race is what causes injury. I know, it's weird how it works, huh? I feel like the video might have to end with him cattle prodding me now. I think that's only fair. Uh, I don't know why. Well, I did cattle prod him. You're right. Ah! I wish you would have gotten knocked out, Mudflap. Dude! Dude, I'm so scared. It's a fucking cattle prod. Can I do it to myself? Dude, you're going for my nuts. I kind of want it in the arm. Dude, I felt like I got a, a, a frozen fork shoved up my ass right there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. That's me waiting until they subscribed. Ah, good. Also, I post three extra videos a week on my Patreon. Check that, it's linked below. If you like the awesome content, that's the way to support. And Leo and I put out a podcast called The Leo and Danny Show every Tuesday. Also linked below, we're gonna go enjoy ourselves in the mountains. Yeah. That sounded like we're gonna go do gay stuff. <laughs> For sure. Broke back mountain. At the moment, I'm setting my alarm for 6.45 and waking up between then and 7. I know it sounds strange, but I love making myself smile for about 30 seconds to a minute because it does release endorphins apparently and I always do genuinely feel happier. Then I just make my bed and tidy my room and I do some morning yoga. Next, I head to the sink and I brush my teeth, and of course, you know the drill, I'm reading whilst brushing my teeth. And I always like to dress up a little bit. I think if you wear something nice, it's like subconsciously telling yourself that the day is important. Even if I'm not leaving the house, I like dressing up for myself. Um, I always feel more motivated for it. I pull back my hair to keep it off my face because it is quite long and I will just wash my hands and put in my contact lenses. Then I headed downstairs for breakfast. Blakeney and I used to have breakfast together every morning. We don't do that very often anymore, just because we both have things on and it doesn't really work. But this particular morning that I was filming, Blakeney had made me breakfast because she had a porridge recipe that she really wanted me to try. She made us both this tahini, miso, and date 
porridge. <laughs> it's just so good. So thank you so much Bakney because that was such a delicious breakfast. Usually for breakfast I do have porridge so this is quite standard for the kind of thing that I would have. Then I head upstairs and I do skincare after breakfast. I cleanse my face with a carrot cleanser. I also use this facial serum. I don't wear mascara very often, but just because I was filming, I decided to put some on. Then I sit down at my desk to get started with work. And whilst I'm writing my to-do list, I've got into the habit of putting a really nice painting on full screen on my laptop. It's quite a nice way to encourage myself to look at more art, which is something that I'm trying to do. As you can see, I've also got myself a mug of green tea. Of course, I always have a mug of green tea in the morning. And I wrote my to-do list in my academic planner. This is the one from Pumpkin Productivity. And then I get on with work. I like to do my hardest task in the morning, so I usually work on my dissertation first thing for about an hour and a half to two hours. Then I typically take 15 minutes to do all of my two minute or less tasks, which is something I've recently started doing. I will set a 15 minute timer and then I'll just do all of the tiny tasks I need to do. And I also always use this time to reply to some emails. Then after that, I like to do some writing. At the moment, I'm writing a book for my children's writing module and I'm also working on restructuring and editing a book that I wrote last year. So I will write for at least an hour in the mornings. I usually have a big snack at about 11, but I also snack during the morning. Um, I just like snacking while I'm studying. So this morning I was snacking on these dried apple rings, which was so, so good. I also go on a walk at some point in the morning, um, but the time of that just depends on my mood. But that is my quite simple morning routine. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope that you have a productive week.
So a guy dies. Okay. How? <laughs> Is that what you're gonna say? He, yeah. <laughs> Is this the beginning of a poem? <laughs> I think it's the beginning of a poem. I won't tell you if you don't want to. I want, I want clues. <laughs> a bird drowns. Ooh. Oh. And the rainbows form. No. Oh, Big it's one. fucking. <laughs> That's no, how the Just think about this. He's a he's an elderly man. So how did he die? Fell down the stairs like a fucking bag of sticks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a real expression? How <laughs> in his sleep? Cause he's a geezer. No. He died from COVID. He was having sex and he died. No. Um, that would be the sickest way to go. Not for her or him, but. Yeah. His duvet tapped him out. Maybe. No. He died oh, during a <laughs> crucifixion reenactment, but the cross fucking went bang. You're close, <laughs> but no. He choked Fuck. on his dentures. No. <laughs> his hearing aids exploded. No. Is there a reenactment at all? He had a heart attack while he was playing Santa Claus. <laughs> You're all wrong. <laughs> I was close. Santa Claus and I was like, okay, no. um, Civil War, maybe? He was Definitely. flying an airplane. No. He got fucked to death by a bunch of dudes in a gangbang. Oh my oh, god. Yeah, for real, actually. That's sad. Man. Wait, so was, he was a, is he a senior citizen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that really the thing? Yeah. He got passed around like a piece of meat. Damn. Yeah. Fucked to death? <laughs> Are you fuck fucking that. serious? Dude, they wouldn't let up. I know, dude. They wouldn't let up? I don't know if you're serious. No, it, it says it right here. Shut up. They it sounds like crazy. It sounds like bullshit, but no. So they, Wait, it was sounds it like Steve Green. Green. That's what orgy? it sounds like. Is this a sex crime? Or was it Was it like a... name is Garde, okay? Garde was found having been fucked to death. Wait, Garde had an orgy. Having been fucked to death. It sound like coroner terms. Garde had an orgy. It's, it's a public that, statement. It says that the group of offenders had a, a case of sugar-free Red Bull and they just kept going. What the fuck? Oh, dude. Wait, no way. They wouldn't stop dude, going in on him. Fuck each other to death? All right, let's do it. They didn't stop. It says they didn't stop going in on him. And he just couldn't pull through. He had no right. chance, yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Wait, how old is this dude? Uh, like 81? 70 years old. 70. So, I'm still waiting yeah. for that moment where he's like, no. So this it's is, not going to happen. It, it was consensual to a point? No, no, no. It was a bizarre incident. Where a bunch of people, incident. yeah, a bunch of people dragged him into this environment, and then What's yeah, had the, the real work? article. So Jack in the Box has a new sandwich. Environment? What the <laughs> fuck are these? No, terms? so so uh, people don't know why he died. Natural causes, probably. But, <laughs> but there's a sad incident where um, two people who found him dead dragged him into a post office to collect his pension. Oh, what? Yeah. Wait, so they did one of those Weekend at Bernie shits yeah. where they put him on a dolly and they're like, yo, man, it's my boy Bernie. Yeah. And then, like, he's like, that, that might be worse damn. than fucking dude. someone to death, man. That's dude, crazy. I know, dude. If you just yeah. died mid-coitus, you know? It's That's bad. very different than this. So they so they wheelbarrowed him. Yeah, they did. That's so then, wrong. Did they go to then, jail for that? Wait, how, how do you get money out of the post office? How does well, that... Well, no, so what you do is, well, you at the post office is where, you <laughs> is where you collect the pension, right? You send it, it to is? the pension Is this America? No. No, 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 no. This, like this is in Ireland. In Ireland? I didn't know you get the pensions at the post Irish office. Shit. I thought you they they bring it to your door. No, it's in not. a fucking thing called an envelope. So those exactly. old people got to leave the house every time to collect the pension? The envelope. This is some fucking weird Irish it. shit, man. <laughs> well, they don't have postal guys that deliver checks and shit. So the best part is that you have to be present for it. <laughs> and then... Um, they propped him up against the counter and told staff that he was here and asked for the pension. <laughs> Did they prop him up? Did they prop him up and then they fucking played his fucking... Hey, I'm, I'm gonna get my pension, buddy! Yeah, fucking talk boy thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me my pension, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the 90s. Count of one to ten. <laughs> but it's fucking in Ireland, so they're like... Oh, he's, oh, he sounds weird. He doesn't sound like us. <laughs> it's just a little bit hot, huh? Make a bit hot. Give me my pot of gold. <laughs> sounds like an American. Looks like a real gang rape victim there, huh? <laughs> oh, another one fucked to death. Oh, my goodness. Another one bites the dust. That's happening a lot here in Dublin. What happened to my Dublin ass? <laughs> Must have been a case of sugar free Red Bull. <laughs> It's what motivates them. It's crazy. I so love yeah, they're looking into you know whether any criminal offense was carried out. Obviously, yes, it was. But they're looking <laughs> into it. Yes. They have to make sure that they confirm that that's what happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they the the men come in and they say they want to collect.
that's why I'm homeless. Lacking happiness and then some blue wings again. And no plane to grant her riding there. I do do declare her. No skies are bluer. No friends are truer. Anywhere, anywhere. Take me to your heart. Give me one more start. Eyes a little shy. Just a lot of why. Louisiana, Louisiana, my own.
Like a leaf on a tree that's coming loose from the stem. Shaking like a leaf on a tree because I'm coming loose from my man. I'm like a weeping willow, weeping on my pillow. For years and years there ain't no sweet man. That's with the soul of my ba da da ba ba da ba da da ba 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 da da ba da. Down and down he dragged me like a pain he nagged me. For years and years. There ain't no sweet man that's worth the salt of my ba da da ba da da da. Although I may be blue, still I'm true. I must tell him goodbye. Just rather than have that man gonna lay me down and just die. Down, broken hearted mister, aggravated mister.
Thank you. 